Hello everyone, this is Tech Talk Universe. Whenever we talk about the universe with people, it always gives us a sense of powerlessness. It's that feeling that no matter how hard humans try, we can never reach the end. Today, we will use 17 celestial bodies to describe the vast universe and see how magnificent and magical it is. First, we need to find a reference point, and the most reasonable and familiar one is the sun. How big is the sun? The formula for volume is Vitae D4 3 par 3. The sun's diameter is equivalent to 109 earth piles. The volume of the sun compared to earth is equal to 109 multiplied by 109 multiplied by 109, which is approximately 1.3 million times larger. So, you know, the sun can fit around 1.3 million earth inside it. Yeah, it's hard to wrap our heads around that, right? I mean, Looking at this true-to-scale image of the celestial bodies in our solar system, it's tough to picture the sun holding 1.3 million Earths. Now let me put this into perspective for you. 1.3 million. If you count one number per second, you'd need 15 days, one hour, and an extra six minutes to count up to that number. I wasn't buying it until I saw this experiment someone did. They took a big sphere and filled it with a million smaller spheres. The big one was supposed to be the sun, but the smaller ones were a tad larger than Earth's scale. This meant it could only hold a million of them, not 1.3 million. And you know what? That's when it started to click for me. But to be convinced, I'd have to count 10,000 of those small spheres from inside and compare them. Do you know what they say? Seeing is believing. So why am I bringing up this example? Well, for two reasons. First, we need to understand just how big the sun is since we're using it as a reference point. Second, the universe scale is typically expressed in two values. One is the diameter of a celestial body, and the other is its volume. Once you grasp the relationship between diameter and volume. That is, the volume of a sphere is proportional to the cube of its diameter. You'll have a more intuitive understanding of the vastness of the universe. Now that we've got that concept in our heads, let's dive into our first celestial body, Sirius A. Sirius A has a diameter that's 1.8 times larger than the Sun, and its mass is twice that of the Sun. Sirius A is located in the constellation Canis Major, which is a constellation situated in the southern celestial sphere. But because it's relatively close to our solar system, only 8.6 light years away, Sirius A is also the brightest star in the night sky. Next up, we're moving on to Vega. Vega has a diameter that's 2.7 times larger than the Sun, and its mass is 2.1 times that of the Sun. There's a formula for a star's lifespan. If a star's mass is three times larger than the Sun, its lifespan is reduced by 750 times. So Vega's lifespan is only a tenth of the sun's, which is about one billion years. Vega already has a 500 million year history, and in another 500 million years, it will reach the end of its life and undergo a supernova explosion. Vega is also the first star, other than the sun, to be photographed by humans. The next star we're talking about is Arcturus. Arcturus has a diameter that's 26 times larger than the Sun and a volume that's 18,000 times greater. Arcturus is located in the constellation Bootes and is the brightest star within it. Although Arcturus is big, its mass isn't much larger. It might be equal to the Sun's mass or at most 1.5 times greater. In 5 billion years, our Sun will become a red giant star, possibly quite similar to Arcturus's current state. After a red giant explodes, its core transforms into a white dwarf star. White dwarfs have a volume similar to Earth's, but their surface gravity is about 180,000 times stronger. Under such immense pressure, no objects can exist, even atoms are crushed, and electrons are ripped from their orbits, turning them into free electrons. White dwarfs are incredibly stable, with lifespans reaching tens of billions or even hundreds of billions of years. Eventually, White dwarfs will lose all their energy and become dead stars, known as black dwarfs. Our sun will ultimately become a black dwarf. Next up, we have Rigel. Rigel has a diameter that's 74 times larger than the sun. Now don't let Rigel's massive size fool you, because most giant stars are somewhat hollow. 
Its mass is only 18 times that of the Sun. For stars with masses between 8 and 20 times that of the Sun, when they explode and die, they don't form white dwarfs. Instead, they form neutron stars. Neutron stars are an even more peculiar type of celestial body. Typically, neutron stars have a diameter of only a few dozen kilometers, but their mass is comparable to the Sun's. Imagine compressing such a massive amount of matter into an area the size of Beijing's Third Ring Road. The density of a neutron star then becomes between 8x10 circumflex 14 and 10 circumflex 15 grams per cubic centimeter, equivalent to more than 100 million tons per cubic centimeter. Neutron stars tightly press all atomic nuclei together with one nucleus right next to another. How fascinating! Neutron stars will also undergo further evolution. Due to their high temperature and rapid energy consumption, their lifespans aren't very long, only a few hundred million years. In the end, neutron stars will also become non-luminous, tiny black dwarfs. Moving on, we have Betelgeuse, which is a red supergiant star. Its diameter is about 900 times larger than the Sun's. If it were located at the center of our solar system, its surface would extend beyond the asteroid belt and reach right up to Jupiter's doorstep. However, Betelgeuse is also big but not heavy, with a mass of only 14 to 20 times that of the Sun. According to astronomers' observations, Betelgeuse is nearing the end of its life and is about to explode. Since it's only 724 light-years away from Earth, if it explodes, it will be incredibly bright and visible even during the daytime here on Earth. That would be a fascinating astronomical phenomenon. Next up is VY Canis Majoris, with a diameter about 1,420 times larger than the Sun and a volume 2.9 billion times greater. However, its mass is only 30 to 40 times that of the Sun, making it another hollow star. But it's still considered a massive star. VY Canis Majoris, after its explosion, will form an even more astonishing celestial body, a black hole. At this point, space-time exhibits extremely strong gravity from which not even light can escape. The boundary where light cannot escape is called the event horizon. Observing a black hole is essentially observing the light emitted at the edge of the event horizon. Moving on to UI Scuti, its diameter is approximately 1,700 times that of the Sun. In the past, people believed that UI Scuti was the largest known star in terms of volume. However, this record was broken in 2020, with the new champion being HIP 26718. Its diameter is 3,070 times that of the Sun, and its volume reaches a terrifying 289 billion times the Sun's volume. For stars of this scale, like HIP 26718, their lifespans are only around 10 million years. To live as a summer flower and die brilliantly is the perfect description for these stars. Moving on, we leave the realm of stars. NGC 1277 is a lenticular galaxy located in the constellation Perseus. At its center is a supermassive black hole with a diameter 42,850 times that of the Sun. Its mass is estimated to be between 20 and 50 billion times the Sun's mass. Next up is an even larger black hole, Quasarton 618. Its diameter is 290,000 times that of the Sun, with a mass approximately equal to 66 billion times the Sun's mass. It is located in the constellation Canes Venetici, the black hole inside Ton. 618 is the largest black hole observed by humans so far. Due to its enormous mass, the gaseous accretion disk of the galaxy is attracted to its surroundings. When the gas in the accretion disk falls toward the black hole, energy is released in the form of electromagnetic radiation, emitting an extremely bright light. Tiun 618 is one of the brightest celestial bodies known so far, hence it is called a quasar. But at its core, it is a supermassive black hole. Moving on, we have the Cat's Eye Nebula. The Cat's Eye Nebula has a diameter of 0.4 light years. From now on, our distance unit will be changed to light years. Nebulae are the products of supernova explosions. According to Earth's time, the Cat's Eye Nebula exploded about 1,000 years ago. The mass of the star before its evolution is estimated to be about five times that of the Sun. 
The Cat's Eye Nebula has an extremely complex structure, with large and small circles intertwined, making it incredibly beautiful. It doesn't seem like the result of an explosion, and people still don't understand how this formation came to be. Moving on, we have the Helix Nebula. The Helix Nebula has a diameter of 5.1 light years, which is incredibly huge. Surprisingly, it was formed by the explosion of a red giant star with a not-so-great mass. Scientists found a white dwarf star within the Helix Nebula, proving that the original star's mass wouldn't exceed eight times that of the Sun. It's a mystery why this nebula is so massive. It's as if the nearest star to our solar system, Proxima Centauri, exploded and engulfed the entire solar system. It's hard to imagine and remains an unsolved enigma. The Helix Nebula was once called the Eye of God, but after the 2003 movie The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, gained worldwide popularity, people began referring to it as the Eye of Sauron. Moving on, we have the Orion Nebula. The Orion Nebula has a massive diameter of 24 light years. It is the closest stellar nursery to our sun in the Milky Way galaxy, containing thousands of newborn stars. Most of these stars formed around 2 to 3 million years ago. Since these baby stars can be used to deduce what the sun looked like in its early stages, the Orion Nebula has always been a hot spot for astronomers to observe. Next up is the Omega Centauri. The Omega Centauri has a diameter of 150 light years. It is a globular cluster orbiting our Milky Way galaxy. The Omega Centauri is about 18,300 light years away from Earth. This cluster has a peculiar feature. Despite its diameter of only 150 light years, it contains millions of stars, tightly packed together. In contrast, there are only a few dozen stars within 15 light years of our solar system. This difference is quite significant. Astronomers speculate that the Omega Centauri might have once been the core of another dwarf galaxy, torn apart and absorbed by the Milky Way, becoming a part of it. This indirectly demonstrates that stars in the center of galaxies are densely packed together. If we were to live close to the center of the Milky Way, the night sky would undoubtedly be incredibly bright and dazzling. However, the strong radiation might make it impossible for life as we know it to exist. But then again, who says life must take the form it does on Earth? Is it possible that plasma-based life forms could exist? It's hard to say for sure. Moving on, we have the Small Magellanic Cloud. The Small Magellanic Cloud has a diameter of 7,000 light years. It is a small galaxy containing billions of stars. The Small Magellanic Cloud is about 200,000 light years away from the Milky Way, making it one of the closest extragalactic neighbors and the most distant celestial object visible to the naked eye. Next up is our very own Milky Way galaxy. The Milky Way has a diameter of 100,000 light years and is home to an estimated 100 billion to 400 billion stars. It's believed that around 11 billion planets like Earth reside within habitable zones. So, intelligent life may exist elsewhere within the vast expanse of the Milky Way. Consider the thought of 11 billion Earth-like planets. It's unlikely that none of them harbor life. If that were the case, it would imply that Earth was created by a divine being as there would be no other explanation. Currently, observations suggest that the Andromeda galaxy is moving towards the Milky Way at a speed of 300 kilometers per second. In three to four billion years, it's likely to collide with our galaxy. These two galaxies will eventually merge into a new elliptical galaxy. Moving on, we have IC 1101. IC 1101 is an enormous elliptical galaxy located at the center of the Abel 2029 galaxy cluster. Its light extends from the core to 600 kiloparsecs, and scientists estimate its diameter to be roughly 2.8 million light years, which is 28 times the diameter of the Milky Way. IC 1101 is currently the largest and brightest galaxy known in the universe, containing about 100 trillion stars. Once numbers reach such astronomical scales, it becomes difficult for our minds to form a concrete concept of their magnitude. Next up is the Bootes Void. The Bootes Void has a diameter of 250 million light years 
and is located in the middle of the northern constellation, Bootes. The Bootes Void is a mystery, as it is a vast region of the universe with very few galaxies present. On average, there is only one galaxy for every 10 million light years. Astronomers once used an example to illustrate the void's emptiness. If our Milky Way galaxy was at the center of the Boots Void, before the invention of large astronomical telescopes in the 1960s, people would have believed that there was only one galaxy in the universe, as nothing else would be visible to the naked eye beyond the Milky Way. Why is the Boots Void so empty, almost devoid of anything? Astronomers have yet to find an answer. Moving on, we have our observable universe with a range of 93 billion light years. This is the limit scientists have estimated for the range of the universe that can be observed by humans. People often ask since the universe has only been around for 13.8 billion years, and it's said that nothing can travel faster than light. Shouldn't the observable universe's radius be just 13.8 billion light years? This understanding is incorrect. According to the general theory of relativity, matter and energy are interchangeable, and the ultimate speed limit for matter is the speed of light. However, the universe's space is not matter, and the expansion rate of space is allowed to exceed the speed of light. Therefore, the range of the universe extends far beyond 13.8 billion light years. Based on this theory, Scientists believe that if the currently observable universe's size is compared to a light bulb, the unobservable universe's range would be equivalent to the size of Pluto. Just imagine, what would it feel like to have a light bulb at the center of Pluto? This light bulb represents the limit of human knowledge. What lies beyond the light bulb will remain forever unknown to us, let alone what lies beyond the universe. How vast the universe remains unsolved. To quote a Buddhist saying, the universe is as boundless as the dust in all directions and the 3,000 worlds. Many people oppose watching videos like these, believing that they can only bring about a sense of emptiness and helplessness. However, that's not entirely true. In recent decades, some inspiring new theories have emerged that may redefine the relationship between the universe and humanity. For example, String theory could provide a new method of travel, allowing us to enter multidimensional space-time. Perhaps in the blink of an eye, we could leap beyond the bounds of the observable universe. Think about how 10,000 years ago, ancient people would have found it hard to imagine flying around the Earth in airplanes. Maybe in another 10,000 years, humans will be able to traverse the entire universe. That's it for today's episode. If you enjoy my show, don't forget to follow my channel. This is Tech Talk Universe. See you next time.